You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to Caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at Caskers.com. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Tell the tackle... What's up, guys? Welcome to Packers Total Access Post Game Show. My name is Clayton. You can check us out at Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. I'm joined alongside Tim live in Green Bay. And uh, obviously the Packers come away with a big win here today against the Rams. Listen, we all know it was a beat up Rams team, just like the Packers are beat up too. But this is one of those games, Tim, that you come away on both sides of the ball feeling better than the previous game you played. At least that's the way I kind of feel about it how, how are you seeing this just initial reaction response all that good stuff I'm right there with you we saw a lot of the same in some respects of uh the game with uh penalties and c- certain things but we also saw a lot of improvement or at least a lot of getting back to things that we saw this team doing earlier this year and uh I don't know I'm I'm happy we'll take the win we're back on track um we're not sure where the tracks lead at this point, but you can't win 10 in a row to finish your season without getting that first one. Right guys. So we'll, uh, we'll take it. I'm going to remain positive. Um, I said before the game, the win streak starts today and uh, the team responded. So proud of the guys today. No touchdowns given up by the defense today. Beautiful, beautiful performance (laughs) defensively. I just didn't see much praise for Joe Barry either. It's surprising. Oh, you won't. (laughs) You yeah. And again, it was it was, uh, you know, ripping at quarterback. I got you. Makes sense. But, you know, they also have two of the best receivers in the league this year. Um, and the fact that they come out and, and kind of played lots out and did what they were supposed to do. You know, we always say that, Tim, when a when you when you stop a team that you're supposed to, you go, that's what good defenses are supposed to do. Right. Yep. And uh, I'm not saying this game puts them in the good range, but I think they're right there where they've been all year, which is in the middle not in the bottom, like everybody said. I know like people like to point to DVOA, and I think DVOA's, DVOA is important, but it ain't tell-all, end-all either. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with what the defense did today. I'm also happy with what Jordan Love did, man. Like I said, these are just initial impressions. We'll talk stats and stuff here in a minute. Hopefully we'll catch a little bit of the pressure as well. I'm keeping my eye on that. But um, with Jordan Love, you've seen a few passes get away from him. You've seen him late on a couple of throws. But this was a, I feel like, a big improvement from last week. Now, again, we've got to put it into perspective just like the defense, right? Um, This isn't a great defense he was going up against. You had Aaron Donald. Yes, he's an absolute monster. But all in all, you know, you're supposed to to move the football in teams like this. I know we got us a first-half touchdown finally. But would have liked to have seen a little bit more in the first half. But I, I feel like the adjustments after halftime, and, and like I pointed out to Ryan, we were chatting. I'm like, man, when they go to that two-minute drill and they spread things out, everything opens up. 
it's uh, it's amazing how that works. But uh, like I said, we'll get to some of the some of the big plays of the day and all that good stuff. But uh, I want to go to the super chat real quick. Josh Martin said Dobbs is our number one wide receiver. Watson has made a glass. I agree. Dobbs is a number one wide receiver, Josh. Um, I, I don't know, man. The Watson play, him landing on – looked like he landed on the football. What are you going to do about that? I know if I land on the football, I'm probably getting carted off – or not carted I'm probably leaving the game too, especially coming down the way he came down. But uh, people don't want to hear this, but the reason he got hurt on that play, the throw was behind him. He had the whole sideline for that corner slash out route. It almost looked like a, like a choice route. He was working to the open field, and the ball came over his inside shoulder – and uh, obviously cause him to slow down, take the hit, land on the ball, that stuff. But all in all, man, I, I think it's a tough game, and I don't think anybody's made a glass. I just I respectfully disagree with that. But as far as Dobbs being our number one, yeah. I'll tell you this, though. I'm very, very excited about uh, what Luke Musgrave did, as well as Tay Wicks is starting to get more and more opportunities, and that's really, really important, I think. But, Josh, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. We've got another one, I believe. <laughs> We'll get to it, and then we'll kind of start diving into some of the stats and some of the specifics, if that's cool with you, Tim. Um, so, right, we got Tall Girl. Um, I'm going to change this around a little bit here. There we go. We got uh, Tall Girl says, uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, love played okay, still inconsistent, underthrew Watson when he was wide open for a touchdown. Yeah, that was the deep pass down the left side. Um, overthrew the ball at the end of the game, but Watson still caught it. Yeah, it was like to me, and I have to go back and watch it. To me, it looked like it was kind of, when I say underthrown, it was on his on his kind of on his back shoulder when he should have led him towards the sideline and away from trouble. And again, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. I think that's just the inconsistency and the accuracy there. But uh, what did you think of Love's performance, Tim? Just right off the bat, um, I thought we saw some improvement. I'll, I'll put it at that. Um, it's it's really weird. I, I will say this. I mean, every time he was uh, on time and throwing in rhythm, it was money. At least that's what my initial impressions were. When we see some of these underthrown balls um, or off, you know, off target throws, you know, these are situations where he's late or even early. Sometimes it seemed like, um, but I think overall, you know, he, he seemed to have a little bit better command out there. Um, you know, the pocket awareness is something though that I feel like uh, it's kind of. I think it's coming along, but I I think it's slowly coming along. I feel like there's times that he's not patient enough. And then there's times he's too patient in there. Right. And, it's, you know, so I think we're still ironing that out, but uh, what did we need to see today? We needed to see this team come together. I think we saw that in a lot of respects um, and we needed to see uh, our offense play better, which, you know, starting the game again, backed up on the special teams penalty was just like at the beginning, it's like, Oh gosh, here we go. We're already yeah, here. It comes, <laughs> here it comes. And then, you know, a couple of unique opinions from our officials when it came to some some of our offensive linemen and where they were. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. It kind of feels nice to complain about the refs after a victory, so it doesn't sound like we're blaming them for anything. <laughs> um, but, um, no, you know, to answer your question, I thought, um, you know, we at least in my opinion, I didn't want to see more of the same, and I think we did see that, but we also saw some changes, and we saw a little bit of uh, – development in real time i think i also think jordan looks really good now on these qb keepers even though we got kind of taken back by penalties and stuff on a couple of those um you know i think he's looking better at that and uh command of the offense seems to be a little better like i said even if it is to a fault with uh him being overly comfortable in the pocket but i mean let's be honest there were times today he had an hour to throw the ball um Plenty of pass protection, so maybe that's where that comes from. Sometimes you think it's there when it's not, and vice versa. Sometimes you think that pressure's coming and it's not there, and you have more time than you think. But yeah, when he's in rhythm, man, he he looks good. Yeah, and and again, the accuracy was a big improvement today. Um, one of the things here, let's see, twenty for twenty six for two hundred twenty eight yards, averaging eight point eight yards. Had one touchdown, no picks. Had four sacks for 21 yards, but I got to be got to be real. It, listen, I got to go back and watch the tape, but my initial response is he held the ball too long. We need to go see it. But his rating was 115.5, so I think this was one of, if not Jordan Love's best performances of the season. Now, one of the things I have in my notes a little later in the game, and I'll kind of go through it chronologically here in a minute, but um, one of the, the notes I had is he's reckless in the pocket. You know, there at the end, the game was still within reach for the Rams, and you're trying to 
you know, just make something happen. You, first of all, you throw the ball backwards eight yards and you held the ball for too long. You got to know, just throw that thing away. Those are the the yards that really matter coming down the stretch. And I didn't come back to the bottom, and that's great. There was another time, too, where he held the ball a little bit too long and uh, and almost turned it over. I, it's it's kind of like what I said with Will Levis when I was talking to Jake Shavink the other night. You love the way he stands tall in the pocket and he's fearless, but you you know there's going to be strip sacks, right? And uh, and with Jordan, the good thing is he's got those large hands. He's actually got bigger hands than both Brett and Aaron Rodgers. So uh, that's that's definitely a, a big plus in that regard. Uh, that that's about, you know, one of the best things you can have for limiting those strip sacks. But at the same time, just got to know when to, when to bail, when to get rid of the ball, all those things. There was, there was one time, I think I counted seven seconds. He held the ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, on that specific play, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but if somebody had hit him at the six second mark, I'd be going, that's a bad thing. Right. That's just, the, yeah. The, the I think it's it that internal clock that you got to just know, you know, that's developing. That internal clock that regardless of what the pressure's like or or do I have anyone open down the field, I gotta know in the back of my head that hey, I've been I've been here too long. It's time to create with my legs or, you know, with my arm any any way I can, but I can't stand in here with the football this right. long. You know, and I think hopefully we'll see an improvement with that over time. But that was I agree with you, Clayton. That was one thing throughout today that kind of stood out to me too was the the pocket awareness. Yeah. Definitely. And Togro, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. We appreciate it. Uh, Mike Hebring with the super chat says the win, the, they win the battle of bad quarterbacks, not much more. You know, I, I want to be more positive than that, Mike, but that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty fair, pretty accurate assessment. I think, I mean, their quarterback was, was really bad. Um, love was good in this game though. We can't, we can't say that enough. Right. And you guys know, I've been, I've been that guy that's saying, I want to see him the whole year, but what I've seen right now, he hasn't convinced me he's the guy. Today, he took a step forward against a bad team, just like the defense took a step forward against a bad team. But um, I, I'm excited to see what happens, you know, next time they're out there for sure. But, yeah, Mike, I, I think that's a, a pretty fair statement nonetheless. But thank you for the super chat, buddy. We appreciate it. Um, let's see who else we got here. Um Holgrove with another one. Thank you for the super chat. He says, Wicks is the guy, always creates separation. I'll tell you, I was I was very impressed with Wicks, uh, Tim, if it hadn't been for him reaching and, and losing that ball. And, again, listen, that's one of those situations where dude's trying to make a play, trying to reach out there, get the first down, and, and loses the ball without being touched. Um, it's a negative play, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's hard for me to be that upset about that type of fumble as opposed to someone just being – you know, careless and getting stripped from behind or whatever. That dude's trying to make a play out there. So, uh, and doing it on the sideline too, which yeah. is typically a safe play. It just took one of those funny hops. But what did you think of Tay Wicks right off the bat? As I look at the stat line here, Tim, uh, Tay Wicks finished with four catches for 40, 49 yards. He caught all four targets and had a long of 18. He averaged 12.3 um, per grab there. But uh, what do yeah. you think of Tay Wicks, man? Tay Wicks is the dude. I agree 100%. And I'll tell you that moment, you know, he is. He's stretching out trying to make a play. It's slick. You know, we saw raindrops off and on all day out there. And uh, that's an unfortunate thing. He almost actually, like, recovered it real quick, too, there. He just couldn't quite bring it back in. But what I think was telling was that was a moment. I believe that play came early in the third quarter. That was uh, that was a moment where we saw an immediate step up as a leader, uh type of situation from Aaron Jones. We saw it from uh, Romeo Dobbs came over. There was a lot of guys that were immediately in Tay Wicks's face telling him to shake that off and, you know, not let that get you down. And you're right. You know, the stat line doesn't lie. He caught three balls after that with perfection. I believe one of them was contested too, or at least semi-contested. So mm -hmm. um, I, I like Tay Wicks or Don Wicks as uh, Jacob calls him. Um, and uh, he's a guy that uh, he gives, let's be honest, uh, he gives us depth, you know, he gives us depth. And um, I just can't wait to see him, you know, I don't think there's a big ceiling. I mean, I, I, at all for him. I don't think there is a ceiling. Who knows what this guy could do yeah. out there, really? Um, you know, I felt that way about him and Malik Heath coming out of training camp. Um, we got to see a little bit of Heath today. I believe he had uh, one that he, he could have had and yeah. Looked bad, a little little bad, low, but he could have caught it. <laughs> bad, bad throw, bad drop. Goes on both. Yeah. Ways, right. Um, One of those things. But um, yeah, man, Tay Wicks, dude, he is uh I think he's lightning in a bottle too, man. And as he he's just raw right now, like a lot of these guys, you know. Yeah. Time and experience will will develop him nicely, I believe. 
Yeah, I agree. And Togro, again, thank you for the super chat. God smack AR69. Thank you for the super chat. He says, I've been a negative Nancy for most of the season, so I'm glad to go to work. Happy tomorrow for once. Would love more Sean Ryan at right guard. He's solid. I, I, I'm, I'm eager to go look at that tape, God smack, because it felt like he played well. I don't know how many snaps he was in there for, but it did feel like he played well. But again, thank you so much for the super chat. We're going to go to QB1, then we'll get back in here, uh, Togro, and get to your next super chat. But uh, let's see here. I think we got Jordan at the podium. Let's see what QB1 had to say. And uh, let me switch this around for you guys. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. All right, here we go. Here is QB1 at the podium. Um, I think just put it together in all three phases. You know, offense played good. Defense balled out. Special teams were able to make some plays. And, um, you know, it's not perfect. Um, it's never going to be perfect. But I think just the position we were able to put ourselves in um, and to come out with a win, it, it definitely um, is going to help us. And we just got to keep stacking it going forward. You have that run game to lean on. What does that do for you in the passing game? Yeah, I mean it, it's it's awesome. You know, it's uh, I think it just helps open more things up downfield. Um, and then, like you said, just being able to lean on that run game and just know that we're going to pound out those yards and, and make those, um, you know, just keep pushing the ball down the field. And it, I think it's demoralizing for a defense when you're able to run the ball well. Um, and that's what we did. And you know, credit to the O line, credit to the running backs, um, tight ends, and everybody blocking. Um, but. It was, it was a good feeling to get that running game going today. You talked about the rhythm. How about how important was Aaron Jones in establishing that rhythm that you guys got into? It was, it was very big. Um, you know, anytime you have a player like that, you want to get him the ball as much as you can, get him going, get him in a rhythm. Um, and I think that's what we did early. We were able to get him some touches, um, get him going. Um, but, you know, he balled out. He was able to make some really good runs, um, had a couple good catches. Um, but like I said, anytime you can get him going, get him in a rhythm, it's a uh, big time. You think what, you get, what would it be like to have him back to 100%? He said this week he pretty much felt 100%. He went out and kind of showed it. What was it like to see that again for the first time since we – There you go, Sam. No, it was, it was good. Obviously, you know, he's been battling through some stuff, and he, he's a warrior. He goes out there and competes every day, competes every week, um, and is able to battle through those those things that he's fighting. But uh, to, you know, get him back healthy, get him 100% and get going to that rhythm um, is huge. Jordan, how did you feel Dontavian um, bounced back from the fumble? It looked like on the one you kind of dropped down sidearm, you know, to hit him over by, over by your sideline. You kind of went to him in a key situation there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just – you know, it's all about bouncing back. You know, you never want to make a, a mistake like that. And, um, you know, he, he knows, you know, can't reach the ball out right there. But, uh, um, you know, we just talked to him on the sideline. Like, the ball's going to keep coming to you. Just, you know, find a way to bounce back and make those plays. And that's what he did. You know, he kept his head down, kept going, um, and made a, a key, you know, catch on the sideline right there. Um, but, you know, it's happened. It's, it's an imperfect game. Um, mistakes happen. It's all about how you respond and bounce back. All right. So that was uh... – Said that was QB one at the podium. Love what he said about Wicks. Like I said, I, I think Wicks uh, came out and played great. I think he's only going to get better. Um, like you were saying, Tim, I think he's got a very high ceiling, if, if any ceiling at all. Um, and, and and again, it's it's the little things that you notice with Tay Wicks. It's the separation he creates. It's how he he catches with his hands. He's uh, he's got a lot. Of, he's got very good body balance. All those things that you're looking for. Um, I think it's huge. But uh, Togra with the super chat says, "How about that Valentine? Yeah, man, that was uh, man. It was a it was a great game for uh, for Carrington. You know, we kind of talked about it coming into this game, Tim, um, saying, look, we could very well be looking up, um, you know, two, three, four games down the road and go, dang, we didn't need so um, we hit one with Valentine. I didn't. Yeah, I'm not putting my money on it. I don't think anybody in here is putting their money on it. But he balled out today, absolutely balled out. Had three pass breakups. And, and there was just times that you could tell um, going up against Puka. I, I, didn't see, I didn't see a play where he was on cup. Maybe I missed it. But uh, when he was covering Puka Nakua, I mean, he held his own to the point where you've seen Puka kind of get a little bit frustrated and shove him down on the ground that one or out, right? And, and I, that's a positive for me. When I seen that, Tim – I was like, heck yeah, dude, he is in Puka's head. And That's even awesome. getting that that uh, offensive uh, P.I. call there, too, I believe it was. Or I don't mm -hmm. know if they got him for an illegal contact or something. But there was a lot of extra um, on a multiple plays because, yeah, Carrington was in his, in his grill all day long. You know, one thing I also saw from him today uh, on several plays, I can't wait to break down this film this week, um, you know, anticipation. You know, we talk about the quarters concepts and don't, you know, don't leave your quarter until it's time to leave your quarter. And, and you know, you 
you kind of know right you're not even leaving your quarter you're playing the edge of your quarter you're getting to the outside area of your space and you're doing it in time there was actually one pbu he had that he he knew he was going to be early and you've seen him kind of almost contort his body and pull up ever so slightly to to avoid the early contact and still made a play on the ball so there you talk about another guy with a non-existent ceiling I think Carrington Valentine falls into that equation. Um, so yeah, it was uh it was good to see him step up, man. I'm just I keep thinking back to August and having my eye on guys like Carrington Valentine and Anthony Johnson Jr. and to get to see these guys get out there today and play, get those opportunities and play well. They played well, not just for rookies, but just you know, for an a NFL corner that we got solid games out of those guys today. Definitely, definitely. Keyshawn Nixon as well. Yeah. Jai Year. Great point, uh, Nick McSwain right here in the chat. Yeah. Jai had a good game too. I think something clicked. It was sometime in the third quarter, and we started to see a change with Jai Year, and he yeah. was getting involved. Um, he had a PBU tip ball for the pick. He had another one where it looked like he tipped the ball, but he didn't. But him just recovering and being there kind of distracted that receiver and, and forced a drop. Uh late in that third quarter, I believe. But um, Mm -hmm. that made me feel really good because it almost makes me wonder if Jair heard some of the chatter. You know, that's a guy that's used to doling out the chatter. I wonder if he heard some of the chatter. And uh, I think he stepped up today in that second half and closed out a a really solid performance, which is what we need to see. You know, and I I was telling my wife this today. I said, I'm almost at the point with Jair that, you know, if you're going to be a guy that's just going to be a splash play dude, and maybe just not be a liability out there, then then fine. I guess that's what we're going to get. <laughs> but you can't be getting torched by uh, by rookies, you know. And uh, I thought he held his own today. I mean, he played on Nakua a little bit. He was also mostly – I seen him on Cup, you know, mm-hmm. near Cup a lot today. And, uh, you know, had a couple open field tackles, you know, getting in there. Mm-hmm. The, the other thing when it comes to the secondary that I saw from the from the gate today was communication, communication – communication uh Mm -hmm. ant johnson jr communicating valentine communicating Keyshawn nixon talk about a guy who stepped up today yeah Uh, he had one of his better games today so uh you know i'm happy with our secondary's performance today as a whole yeah definitely and you know uh like nick said there jai had a good game right bill ryan uh jire earned his money today you seen he to me, in the second half, he looked more like the old Ja. And maybe that was – he heard the chatter. Maybe it was that back loosened up a little bit today. And you're out there testing. He had a rough first quarter. Yeah. I know people immediately said, well, the receiver pushed him. Uh, listen, uh, an all-pro corner can fall down only so many times before I stop making excuses for him, <laughs> right? An, all-poor, an all-pro corner jumps that route and houses a pick six right. on that play. And he had uh, – he was second in the team. Check this out, Tim second in team stats for for tackles with seven, right? All seven of his tackles were solo tackles. He had one for a loss. He had two pass deflections. And uh, like I said, that that some of those pass deflections too, I mean, I think both of them, he was diving after the football. He looked like old Ja. Yep. And uh, that's exciting for me for sure. Um, I'll tell you this too. Uh, we'll get to the super chats here. Um, like Tim Monk, yeah, he basically hit the nail on the head. He looked like he was playing loose. And, and that's the way to do it, loose and fast, absolutely. It looked like that back might have loosened up a little bit. Like Chris Hinn said, against the bad quarterback, fellas, we said the same thing, buddy. We said the same thing, but you can only play the team in front of you, right? And it was a step forward today. There's no doubt about that. Um, part of me almost only – part of me almost wants Stafford to have been healthy to see, okay, was that legit or was it just bad quarterback play, right? Uh, but, yeah, nonetheless – Good game for sure. Uh, let's go to the super chat. We got AJJ. Thank you for the super chat, buddy. He said, nice win today. Finally, J Love has a ways to go, though. He does. He does. But I think we would all agree this was a a slight step in the right direction, right? Um, and and that's what we're looking for for the rest of the season. We just want to see in, incremental improvements, right? I, I don't care if it's two steps forward, one step back, right? Two steps forward, one step back. Every game he plays, and it's why it's important not to bench him, right? Every game he plays is going to be an opportunity for him to step up and correct the mistakes he's made. You heard Goody say that's what he's seen. I disagree with that personally. I haven't seen him fix those mistakes until today. Today he looked a lot better, in my opinion. But 
that being reckless in the pocket, man, that's something that you're that's that's another negative mark. Right. And and this isn't to focus on the negative. It's professional football. The goal is identify the negative and let's turn those into positive somehow, some way. Right. So that internal clock is just something I think with time he's going to pick up. And uh, obviously the accuracy, I think, was better today, although it did pop up a couple of times. Right. Um, which every NFL quarterback has bad throws in every game. Right. It happens. It's just Jordan has had more than arguably every other quarterback in the league this year. Today, I feel like he was more above average, if anything. I think that would be a good assessment. I would say he played good. His accuracy was above average today. Do you, do you agree with that, Tim? I would definitely say above his average. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good point. <laughs> hey, sure. JJ, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. We got Mike Hebring with the super chat. Run the ball, stop the run. Works every time. Hey, listen to me, Mike. Listen very closely, buddy. I, I looked up and I'm like, Hark! Look at this. We are we are committing to the run and stopping the first down shenanigans, and all of a sudden we're playing from ahead. It's amazing how that works, man. And I don't mean to be snarky or, or anything like that, but I'm just telling you, man, it, it, it's it's such a simple formula. Now, people will argue Aaron Jones wasn't fully healthy last week. None of us know that, and I'm of the opinion if he's not healthy, then run him on the early downs, right, get the carries out of the way, let him sit the rest of the game and try to play with a freaking lead for once rather than let's, let's, let's hold him until we're down by so much that now we have to pass heavy, and he definitely doesn't get the ball. That's just yeah. – today you've seen uh, totally the opposite – and, you know, Matt LaFleur said going in this game they were going to cut him loose, and I think that's exactly what they did. So you got to give kudos uh, to uh, to Matt LaFleur and uh, and sticking with the game plan there and, and not getting scared out of it early for sure. But, uh, yeah, Mike, I agree, man. Run the ball, stop the run, works every time. Absolutely. And, and isn't it amazing that – Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive, sought after, rare, and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to Caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at Caskers.com. At the safety position, listen, Anthony Johnson Jr. didn't pop up on the stat sheet, but when you, I can't wait to watch the tape because to me, he just looked fundamentally sound. He came from a defense that plays that top down safety spot, right? Played a lot of quarter in college. That's why he was so sought after by the Packers. Not that, you know, they were over, uh, overvaluing him or anything, but, you know, some of the pods that I listened to and some of the draft experts, this was one of the, the picks, him and Tay Wicks were two of the picks that uh, that the draft experts were so excited about. And I'm not talking about draft experts like Mel Kuyper and and mm-hmm. those guys that are just, you know, up there with the hair slicked back acting like they're, you know, mock GMs. I'm talking about the tape junkies, right? I'm talking about your Greg Cosells, people like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see Anthony Johnson Jr. grow a little bit in this defense. And, uh, you know, Jonathan Owens had a good game too, I believe, to the best of my knowledge. Um, thank you for the super chat, Mike. We appreciate it, buddy. Um, let's look at the stat line again. Jonathan Owens led the team with tackles, had eight tackles, had a sack. I believe that was a strip sack too, if I yeah. remember correctly. So, uh, obviously he got the strip sack. Devondre Campbell, uh, recovered that, uh, that fumble. And that was my first quarter notes, that play there. And then also just too many penalties, Tim. They seemed to settle down after that, but man, there was a lot of penalties there in the first quarter, weren't they? Yeah. And you know, I'm, 
I'm of the logic that if you're not playing fundamentally sound, I don't care what this young young team crap. I'm over it. I don't want to hear it. We are, everybody knows we're a young team. Um, you know, we're halfway through the season here, so um, you know you got to make less mistakes. They're going to happen. You're going to get a false start. You're going to line up on the ball once in a while. I mean, Rashawn had had that happen today. You know, Rashawn's not a young player. He's a veteran on this team. You know, mistakes happen. We understand that, but we've got to we got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot on some of these. Um, but again, you know, in, in uh, John Runyon Jr.'s defense today, I there were a couple calls on him that I just had me scratching my head. And um, it's always interesting when we get TV playback and they're trying to illustrate a guy, you know, in the neutral zone, yet we can't even get a legitimate camera angle from you guys to show us what you're trying to illustrate. Um so I mean that didn't help either, but it doesn't absolve us from some of the some of the poor mistakes that we made uh, today. That that really a lot of them didn't end up fully biting us in the in the rear end later on. Thank goodness. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. hey, we, we saw a little bit of improvement. But you know, I, I definitely think were there less penalties than last week. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll have to we'll have to see overall. Yeah, see, I'll pull it up here real quick. We got LaFleur at the podium, but uh, before we go there, and guys, we're going to get right back to the chat, I promise. I see the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, Packers had, uh, let's see, penalties, penalties. They had eight for 57, and uh, the Rams had five for 36. So, yeah, eight for 57. I think last week we had 13. Is that right? right? Does that sound right? I can't remember. I've I've had a couple daddy stories since then, so I'm not sure. But we'll get back to the super chat here in a minute. God smack, and I definitely want to comment on Goose's uh, chat there as well. Let's see what uh, Coach Lafleur has to say at the podium here. Hopefully, he's still going. Do anything for this offense? Confidence What did that mean as well? Yeah, I think all that. I think all that's so important to be able to make plays, especially in critical situations at the end of the game. Obviously, it was great to see Christian Watson go up and win a 50-50 ball that led to the touchdown. Um, that was a, that was a huge play, and that's something that we've been stressing, and we haven't. I mean, we haven't executed obviously up to this point. So, for him to do that, that led to the touchdown, and um, I thought a lot of the guys came up big late in the game with some some critical plays. Romeo Dobbs had a, a really strong hands catch out in front of him. Jaden Reed obviously had had a nice route and um, that led to the QB sneak. And so hopefully that's something to build upon. Um, I, I know that it, it wasn't the most perfect game by any stretch. And there, there's a lot of things to clean up. But I was proud of the guys in terms of their their ability to continue to compete at a high level. Did you get an explanation on the quarterback sneak offensive, the offsides calls? Yeah, I got to go back and look at the tape. Uh, you know, they called it close, and they called what they called. You're four and zero against uh, uh, Coach McVay. Can you speak to the extra level of competition that you might have when you face him? Yeah, I, I don't put too much stock into that. Uh, certainly, I mean, there's been a couple times they've been a little bit shorthanded, but. And all four four games happen to be in Lambeau, which I think is is a tough place to play for people. And um, but yeah, I, I really don't have much to say about it. For you as the play caller, Jordan as the quarterback, when you have the run game to lean on, what does that do for the offense as a whole? It definitely opens things up. I think you know um, it felt like in the first half there was when when we were calling passes, some bad things were happening. So. Um, for us to be able to, I don't know how many ex- rushes that were actually called or runs that were called throughout the course of the game, but I know we finished on, on the stat sheet with like 38 for, what was it, 184? Um, I think anytime you're able to do that, that means you're moving the sticks as well. You're doing a good job on third down. Uh, you're, you're just able to get into a, a much better rhythm and I, I felt that today, and I, I think that help, it helps everybody. It helps him. It helps me as a play caller, and um, it usually leads to, you know, winning performance. All right. So that was Coach Lafleur at the podium, obviously. Um, so yeah, um, we got Emilio in here with us now. We're going to go to him here in just a second. Let's uh, clean up this chat real quick. 
Godsmack AR69 with the super chat. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, funny how it's covering all of our ugly mugs up. That's the way it works. So I agree with Tim that a lot went on for Jair today. By the way, how the heck did Valentine drop to the seventh round? Strap City was in full effect today. I'll tell you exactly. And thank you so much, Godsmack, for the super chat. I'll tell you how he falls. I'm a Kentucky fan. And they did not play a lot of man coverage. They played a lot of zone, right? In a lot of situations, Carrington was was playing kind of off and also playing um, the side of the field where the ball wasn't being thrown. That's what I remember seeing. Now, I will say this, that hearing um, going into the season, hearing Coach Stoops for Kentucky talk about the secondary and how youthful they are going into the season, he said, yeah, we're really going to miss the emotional leader of our secondary in Carrington. He was a – a big part of what we did last year. So kind of goes to show you how big he was to that Kentucky program. Some of you guys are going, that's Kentucky football, Clayton. It ain't that big. I would have to respectfully agree with you, <laughs> but let's see. Togra with the super chat, uh, Mr. Clayton, maybe you should, maybe you could shine some light on me, but I feel like love have zero anticipation game. That's why he just won't pass until a guy's fully open. Um, you know, it's kind of what we've been talking about Togra. Um, you know, what I'm noticing on the tape that many people aren't, not that they aren't, but I, I haven't heard people talk about it. The accuracy is what's constantly getting talked about and rightfully so he's been inaccurate, but the big thing I'm noticing is how late he is on his throws, right? Today, you didn't see that as much. Now, don't get me wrong. He was reckless in the pocket a couple of times. He held the ball too long on those plays. Absolutely. But you know, like the out routes, the comeback route to Romeo, all those throws, he was right on time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by, hey, that's a pretty big improvement. That's a step in the right direction. But, Emilio, let me get your take on that, man. Like I said, Togo asked here, um, you know, Love, uh, he felt like Love has zero anticipation um, in his game. But um, with that being said, what do you think about Love's performance today, Emilio? And right, you didn't yeah, have, I, I you didn't, you know, before, but – you didn't have to go to B-dubs either, did yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, to that point, uh, Togrel there, uh, he was anticipating it. I mean, those out routes, that's what I was saying a few days ago. He can hit those. He has the arm to hit those out routes. And that double move by Romeo was big. Um, he had to throw that probably after that first move by the time he was making that second move and break out. So he, he had a little bit more anticipation today. But again, we were talking the other day on, you know, just processing things a little sooner. His timer didn't go off on that one when he was, I mean, sometimes he had eight seconds in the pocket today. Sometimes he had two and his timer was just not feeling when that rush was coming. Uh, that was some of the, you know, some of those sacks there. But uh, I, I think he played a little bit better, still had some struggles, obviously, but there was more connections to Musgrave. We, you know, we completed that deep ball. Um, there was a, you know, a deep ball to Watson that we connected on. He only missed what six passes. So accuracy went up. It wasn't obviously a perfect game. They're still young. They're still learning, but we needed something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, goose in the chat say, Clayton, do you think they are trying to officiate out the cheek sneak? I'll tell you this. I've been watching football for a very, very long time. I have never seen them call offsides on, on the offensive lineman the way they did on that first one. Me Not personally, once, twice. I, I just don't remember it. When the second one happened, I listen, I'm no conspiracy guy, but I was sitting there going, what the heck's going on? This is just weird. So I think that's the best explanation of what was going on, Goose. Um, now, listen, there's some people in there going, no, look, his head is in the neutral zone. It's got to be completely behind uh, behind the, uh, the ball. And then you look at Aaron Donald and Aaron Donald's heads over the ball. And it's like, okay, now, okay, well, that's Aaron Donald. He gets the benefit of the doubt. Are, are we officiating the rules or are we officiating player stature? Like, right. you know, that's the stuff that gets on my nerves. Now I will say this. I did notice later in the game on a fourth and short or a third and short for the Rams, noticing the placement of their guards, they were back significantly more than the Packers on those sneak plays. So I think you hit the nail on the head goose. That's the only thing I can come up with is they're trying to officiate that out a little bit, which is just silly to me. I mean, it's I, I like the tush push, the the brotherly shove, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love when when things like this emerge. I love the wildcat when it came into the game and really started to take off because, you know, it's kind of like NASCAR. I used to watch NASCAR back in the day because it was just everybody was trying to get a little bit of an edge, right? And And back then they were really rubbing and racing. And now it's just – it's so damn boring because all the cars are just exactly the same. They just got a different paint scheme and a different body style or, or a different, you know, whatever. 
make of the of the car. But uh, that's why, you know, I don't want I just wish that rules committees and officials would just get the heck out of the way. The game's good enough the way it is. It's like the media sometimes. The media, you turn on a morning show like Good Morning Football and you get excited about, man, this is the way you start your day with some NFL talk. And they're on there trying to be cute, trying to be funny, trying to make it about them. It's like the game is good enough. Report what's going on mm-hmm. in a relaxed manner and get the hell out of the way. That's the way I see it. So, Goose, and, what you or go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. And to that rules point, what, weren't they saying on there that Runyon's dad is – uh, part of the rules, so you would think that it would be coming our way, but it's coming on running. He was the one that got called on twice, so it's it, that was his fault. It wasn't Yash that other time. I'm pretty sure it was running both times, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. I think it was running both times, but they did call it on Yash there once, um, mm-hmm. which is just odd. Which that's where you're kind of splitting hairs because that does happen, right, Tim? I mean, you've seen many times you go, no, that's not actually on him. It was on the other guy. And they do right. end up getting it accurate or correct later. But, Tim, what did you think about that, those offsides calls? Did you think they were there was merit to them, or do you think it's mm-hmm. kind of like what Goose is talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm with Goose. I think it, it could be, you know, I don't know what this rules committee – is going to do going forward with the tush push, but it looks like they may, that could be what we saw, right. You know, try and just officiate it out. And it's like the unwritten, you're telling teams, Hey, we're going to get you. You better be perfect. If you're going to run this play. Cause if they're, you're even off by a fraction of an inch, right. This is a game of inches, you know, they're going to call it. So I don't know, maybe, but it broke my heart because I've been begging for the longest that in these situations where, you know, we, we have a fourth and short, you know, or we didn't convert on our third and short. Now it's fourth and short. Just run up there and run a play. Don't let them sub, you know, just have it in your head that, hey, this is what we're going to do. And then we finally do it today. We had him. I was screaming at the the TV for that official to get get out of there after he spotted the ball. He was that was the other thing. Mm-hmm. Got the ball on the ground, play clocks running and this guy's still in there. Should have just ran him over. But uh, <laughs> the uh you know, they finally get to do it, and then we get these, you know, these pity pat penalty kind of technicality nonsense. It's like, oh, talk about a drive killer, too, there, because, you know, who knows what the final might have looked like, you know, if we had a, that drive extended there early in the game. You know, we might have been up multiple scores early. Who knows? But, yeah, I think so. I, I, I would appreciate it more if they just made up their mind either way, you know. But, again, this is a league that's still confused about what a catch is sometimes, and, you know – what constitutes a football move. You know, if we want to talk about questionable calls, they took another another defensive stat away from Anthony Johnson Jr. today on a on an interesting call too. So, you know, I don't know. Feels good to talk about the officiating after a win though. I'll say that again. Right. Something else. <laughs> Something else. Yeah, we're not complaining too much now. Everybody watching this probably thinks I have Tourette's. I'm having to mute my mic and yell at my my chef over here. She keeps barking. So everybody's watching online. I'm good. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Like I said, Mandy's down at the Vikings game today in Atlanta. So yeah, they just won that. I did, didn't they? I did, yeah. get, I did get confirmation too, man. I feel like I've been cheated on here. Um, she sent me a picture. She was wearing a Vikings shirt in honor of her nephew that she took down there, bro. So if you're well, watching this, if, if you're watching she takes this, it off. Takes that shirt off before she sets foot in the house. You're okay, mm-hmm. right, Clay? Oh, well, she, I was going to make a domestic violence joke, but that's probably <laughs> not something to joke about. So let's keep that to herself. <laughs> it is 2023, 20, my friends. Um, So yeah. Casey Oldham in the chat uh, said, I thought they mentioned something about cracking down on it because everyone has pointed out the Eagles alignment. So it has become uh, an in-season point of emphasis. Yeah, that's exactly what they said. I love that uh, point of emphasis. I love that. That That's each year. It's like, oh, what's going to be the point of emphasis this year? Yeah, it's so silly. Um, Paul Robertson uh, turning the game into a soap opera. That's what this generation of TV media is, and it usually sucks. Completely agree. Oh, I love the profile pick, bro. That's the guy. That's the bowler, right, that said, uh, God, what was that he said? We got to get that. Weber. What that's was that? Weber, right? Yeah. What was the sound body he had? What was it he screamed? Oh, I, I don't think we want to say that. Do we want to say that? No, it, it, it was it was one of the few where he wasn't cussing, but I'm going to find it. Was, it. Yeah, I got to find it. it. It was basically of the 90s. It was the he is him. I am him. Right. Version. But love it. Let's do this. We had uh, Aaron Jones actually on the field uh, doing a quick video. So let's see what uh, let's see what the team captain had to say. I love it. I'll see you down there, Emilio. 
you got you got just enough of uh just enough Italian and Mexican and you have enough yeah. swag to pull that off. If yeah. I did, I'd look look like I had two left. Yeah. Here we go. For any on the podcast, it's two swipes and a first if you, yeah, you missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing I do when I finish mowing the grass. <laughs> Good to go. All right, here we go. Let's see what he had to uh had to say here, if we can hear it. Maybe, maybe not. Here we go. Aaron Jones, Green Bay Packers running back. We just finished handling business. It's been a long one since we got us a W, but all it takes is one to get on that roll. We appreciate the Packer Nation for sticking with us and always supporting. Let's go, baby. Aaron- love it, love it, love it. So giving a shout out to the fans. Dude, that guy right there, protect him at all costs. Mm-hmm. Protect him all at we, all costs. All we needed was one. Yeah. What happened when you fed him the ball? Just what, saying. What an idea, man. First time, what, what was that stat? First time since week 10 of 2022, we got more than what, 10 touches or 10, something like that? It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And what's crazy is he didn't have like crazy effectiveness either. Like he wasn't right. like off the charts. He had 20 carries for 73 yards. He only averaged 3.7 a pop and a touchdown. But what it does when you show the defense after the first or even even the second drive that, hey, Jonesy's going to be getting the ball, they know – He's got the opportunity, the ability, I should say, to hit a home run. And when that right. happens, they have to start creeping up on that box. The play action becomes more effective, all those things. You don't have that home run ability with A.J. Dillon, although A.J. had a great game. Mm-hmm. Nine carries for 40 yards, 4.4 pop. How about Emmanuel Wilson there at the end? Four carries for 43 yards when the Rams are expecting him to run. There was a running back earlier in the year during the preseason. I think it was Maurice Jones-Drew said, listen, I understand it's preseason, but what he did in that game, making that guy miss in the hole, that's not normal. Right. And Maurice Jones-Drew was one of the better backs of the early 2000s, right? I mean, he was a phenomenal, phenomenal guy. If you guys haven't seen that hit on Merriweather, you guys remember that where he uh, – was it – not Merriweather. What's, who was the lights out guy in San Diego? Lights out dance. Who was it? Sean uh, Merriman? Marion, right? Merriman, maybe. So, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, there's a video. If you if you just type in Maurice Jones Drew hit, watch him step up in the hole and hit Sean Merriman. <laughs> oh my God, dude! You see his soul leave his body. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he was and, big on Emmanuel Wilson, and, and listen, the Packers were too, right, Emilio? That's why they protected right. him from the practice squad. Right. And to add to that, the running game, we were getting hats to the side that we were attacking, which I absolutely love. We motion Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon's in the sidecar, and he fills that hole. Blows up the blows up the end with Musgrave. We're not pulling him off with a sift block to the other side, back across the motion. We're keeping our head count. I absolutely love that. I really thought Matt called off first glance a pretty a pretty nice game. Um, and that double that that double screen uh, slip up the middle. That's exactly what I let's run some more. You know, uh, Kansas City Chiefs sort of stuff. Let's try to slip the t- the tight end up the middle. And Musgrave actually looked like he was moving there. He was. Getting up field, he had a little little juke, and we got some, saw some speed there. So I was yep. excited, man. Yeah, you can't yep. do that without what Clayton said. You need that. You need that run game. Yep. None of that stuff is going to work if they're not going to legitimately believe you're a threat to run. Yep. And I think to Coach Lafleur's point, also, you know, yeah, nothing super super spectacular out of Aaron Jones. Not not a lot of explosivity, but man, making those cuts, turning a two yard gain into four or five, you know. There were a couple he missed a hole, but then there were ones that he just bounced it out when you needed him to. And what does it do? It moves the sticks. And that's right. exactly what Coach was talking about. Keep the sticks moving. It almost felt surreal, didn't it, guys, to see us driving down the field with a bit of uh, momentum and kind of a little bit of uh, deliberance to our offense. Looked like we yep. were actually in control of what we were doing for a while there. Yeah. It was That was fun. Is that what when you convert third downs? Absolutely. It was different, but it was fun. <laughs> and that was with, that was with two fumbles, right? And yeah. and we kept and we kept on it. it the yeah. defense played a heck of a game. They kept us in it. They kept. They Can you got, say it one more time, Emilio. Say it one more I, time. I, I would say the defense played a heck of a game. I agree. And I agree. We didn't have Kenny Clark, and the young boys stepped up. So I thought it was a good. I thought it was a really good showing, honestly. Yep. Um, Talk and, about my defense. Keep talking um, them up. I love ooh, it. Ooh. <laughs> hey, nope. No Quay Walker, mm-hmm. no Rudy Ford, mm-hmm. right? No Darnell. Um, no, no Darnell, obviously. You lose no Kenny Clark. Yeah. I mean, come no on. School. And how about the rookies, the young guys stepping up? And I'll get to it in a minute with my notes. But in, in the second quarter, my notes were Jones and Dylan, right? And then immediately following it, 
we got away from the run a bit. <laughs> so you started the first half of that second quarter, you run the ball, run the ball, and then you you come out a couple of drives, try to throw on first down. And then, of course, you have the missed field goal, right? And and really, I think the problem, Emilio, was he, you know, that that first miss there from Anders Carlson, he, yeah. just didn't, he didn't come out there like this. And I'll kick the bloody piss out of it. That's what we were missing, right? That's exactly what he was missing. See, he he was talking to Rich Passaccia, and and he said, "I think I can kick," you know. So, but uh, just didn't come through. I'm glad he I'm glad he you know snapped back and knocked that out. Um, and you know, it was it was just a weird game. You know, a lot of different bounces, a lot of different things happened that we fought through some adversity with some penalties, and we made it happen. But we needed that, or else it's, I mean, if we lost that one, this team would have been. Yeah, uh, in a spiral, I would say. But the yeah. locker room, I think that'll really help them bounce back. You know, whatever they did this past week, um, you know, coming together wise and different practice, you know, routes and different things that they did. I whatever it whatever it did, it kind of worked for them. Yeah, and maybe it was just against the Rams, but um, emotionally, that that emotional factor that we can't put on the stat sheet, I think it really did help them. Definitely. Badger Trio with the super chat. Thank you, buddy. He said, I was at the game. Love still holds the ball when guys are open. Um, we've seen it. We've seen it mm-hmm. definitely. And and I haven't seen the all 22, obviously, but I, I'm sure when you're holding the ball for seven, almost eight seconds, I have a hard time believing every single target was covered. Right. Yeah. But uh, again, that, that was one of the notes I had there toward the end it, that love was just a little bit reckless in the pocket. But again, a step forward, guys, we've got to keep saying that because that's what the, today was. It was a yeah. step forward. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, no doubt. So uh, let's see here. Uh, I, oh, in my notes for the third quarter, obviously you had the Wicks fumble. Um, tough start. So that was tough, you know. And uh, and again, it was him trying to make a play. Look, if you're going to make a mistake, make it big like that, right? Make it because you're being aggressive and you're trying to trying to win a freaking ball game. Mm-hmm. The thing that always bothered me, and I'll kind of draw a defensive parallel, is Darnell Savage. You know, if if you make a mistake, make it big. Okay, you're you're going to hit on some of those occasionally. But when you're kind of just half in, half out, you know, like Tim's dance talking about Dallin Levitt earlier, right? Um, if you're kind of half in and half out, that's that's the mistakes that hurt because you're not playing aggressive, and you can bet your rear end. Others team other teams see that on tape, right? Um, yep. the, that's what we were complaining about with Jair, right? He was yeah. kind of playing yeah. uh, pensive, very passive aggressive, and hey, that'll get you hurt in this league. You that's know, it. Like that's you either, you either go or you don't. You exactly know? what I was going to say, Tim. If you're not going 100%, you're going to get hurt. Someone's getting hurt. Yeah. You know, and it's right. like, lo and behold, Ja, ja seemed okay today, going hard there, closing that game out strong. Mm-hmm. And um, I tell you, man, this defensive unit, uh, guys are playing for each other, man, like you talked about, Clayton. I yeah. think they really are. They're communicating. They're picking each other up. I mean, really, I saw that on both sides of the ball today. But yeah, I'm really proud of this defense today. I really am. Um, yeah. And Devondre Campbell too, man. Way to way to step up. It's like back like he never left. Green dot on, getting guys where they need to be, starting that communication right. Yep. Um, I think we looked good. You know, really all game consistently as far as our communication. We didn't. Did, did we see anything super busted as far as coverages or? Any, no. any cataclysmic mistakes? I didn't. I didn't really see it. Granted, a, we're looking at a backup quarterback-led yeah. offense, but I mean, guys did their jobs today. Um, we even saw guys passing each other. You know, passing coverage is off, like this defense is designed to do. But it's like both guys knew it today. You know, right. last week we're passing guys off to nobody, and um, this week we actually saw guys picking up uh, their responsibilities. So it, it looked good, man. I'm proud of this. Uh, defense particularly the the secondary and um you know zay mcduffie too how about yeah. that run defense from isaiah mcduffie today yeah you know I, i'd be interested to see we'll we'll break down the pff grades when the time's right but uh feeling good about this defense today yeah definitely and that's what i had in my third quarter notes because the offense started to sputter a bit the defense just continued to rise up and just get get the you know get the offense back on the field right yeah. um uh, another you know, as far as the notes of players that played really well in the third quarter, uh, Carl Brooks really stepped up. Isaiah McDuffie, like you guys were saying, and uh, Jair Alexander really started to turn it on there in the third quarter. So when we look at Isaiah McDuffie, um, he actually had seven tackles, had two for a loss. 
Um, and and some of those came, I think both of them actually came on back-to-back plays, I believe. If I yeah. And that's what we've been begging for is someone to be instinctive, go downhill. Yeah. Like we go, like Tim was just saying, go hundred percent. If you think it's going to be a run to the right, don't sit back and wait three seconds for it to get outside the numbers. Shoot yeah. the gap and get him behind the line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, did you see when they tried to sift in Igbari today and he just slipped what? it? He, <laughs> he just slipped it nasty. Oh, that was beautiful. And Thank he was you. hype too. I mean, yeah. he was bouncing off. He was bouncing off Jaden Reed on the side. I thought he was going to headbutt him for a second there, like <laughs> with his helmet on. I was like, dude. Did you see? Did you see Coach Pasaccia kind of turn and give him that? Hey, hey, reel it in. Yeah, reel it in a little bit on the game. He kind just of just gave him a look. <laughs> yeah. You're here. I need you here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like Danny Bateman in the replacements. Okay, it's okay, Danny. Go sit down now. Okay. <laughs> I got you the ball. I got you the ball. <laughs> so, um, the other note I had in the third quarter before we shift gears here in the fourth, and we got Carly Ray on hold here. We'll get to you in just a second, Carly. Um, Musgrave and Wicks there toward the end of the third quarter, if I remember correctly, uh, really turned it on. Luke Musgrave finished the day three catches for 51 yards in his first ever NFL touchdown. Really exciting yeah. there. And then, of course, Dontavian Wicks had four catches for 49 yards. He only had four targets as well. Of course, uh, Musgrave averaged 17 yards catch today, which is really, really exciting. Um, also, Christian Watson just had the one catch for 37 yards. Um, and Jaden Reed had three grabs, only three targets uh, for 19 yards. A couple of those, though, were I feel like were in huge moments. Of course, he had the uh, the end around, how they kind of did a makeshift pony package and ran an mm-hmm. end around to Jaden Reed, that was a 21-yard gain there as well. So, overall, yeah. all-purpose yeah. yards, Jaden finished with, you know, a little over, I think, 50 yards or right at 50 yards. So, that's exciting stuff, too. Let's go to the phones here. We got – well, hold on just one second. Yeah. Jaden was there when we needed him today. He hit that slant, you know, right before – you know, get the kick. So, he was he was the uh, efficient one, I would say, out there. When we needed him, he counted. Absolutely. Badger Trio in the chat. I can't tell if this is the same duplicate super chat or if this is a different person, but said, how did Valentine drop to the seventh round? He's legit. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, Badger Trio, that may be looping through. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, when I'm on this call, baby, don't do it. But uh, <laughs> that, that was, uh, you know, him him dropping to the seventh round, in my opinion, was the style of defense that they played. Right. Uh, that's what it comes down to. So um, in, in Kentucky and uh, – Obviously, him not getting maybe the the notice that he that he could have gotten. But we're going to go to Carly Ray now. Carly, if you're ready, go ahead and uh, bring you in. Um, what'd you think of the game, Carly? I'm real happy that we got the win, and I loved. Yeah, that's just that's just fun. But I love seeing the rookies right? play hard. Yeah, win, wins wins. Uh, I forgot what this felt like. It's kind of cool. Kind of mm-hmm. cool. I'd like to do this again next week if we could. But uh, what's your uh, what's your big takeaway? Did you get to chart it? Did you get to uh, to watch it real close, or were you chasing the kids around today? I was folding laundry, actually. You know, real exciting stuff. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, I could not chart it. But I am excited to do so when I get to watch it again tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to go back to to a topic you guys were talking about earlier about the officiating and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so the second edition of Take Your Eye Off the Ball, you know, by Pat Curran that we obviously talk about a lot here talks about um the penalties and how i thought this was just kind of illuminating i guess in 2014 there was a combined 18 hours of penalties called 51 different types of penalties um 550 more penalties than the year before and 18 hours of penalties that affected the game over the season which was crazy wow yeah that's nuts and and it's probably gone up from there and mm-hmm. some of the things that he says is is about just the complexity of the rule book almost makes it impossible for some of the offic- um, officials to get these calls right and he actually in the book this is just plugging it for anybody who hasn't checked it out he has a, like a plan or something that he thinks would actually help um and it's balancing the like new york doesn't want to undermine the authority of the officials by right. changing things or, over, you know, looking over every decision they make, but then their credibility goes down when we see them make these blatant, crazy calls. And so I just highly encourage people to check out that book because I feel like if fans really understood the game more and pushed for more accountability and credibility, something could change. Yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things that they're trying to keep some of the traditions in the game, by the way. There you go. Um making another pass through it right now. Um, you know, they, you can make this thing completely automated, right? You could have it to where it's, you got a chip in the ball. There's no questions about any call. Uh, you could do, you could have an instant replay every single, 
every single play, and they're trying to keep from going to that dramatic effect. The part that bothers me is you can tell when they want to make a change or they don't. You know, you've seen it with the the pass interference rule addition, right, where you could review pass interference. Even though they added it in, you could tell the officials weren't going to over undermine the officials on the field, right? It was like 90% of the time they were just going to say, no, nope, that's pass interference, or it wasn't, whatever the original call was, and move on, right? So um, I want – First and foremost, I want to remove all questions surrounding questionable officiating. But uh, at the same time, I guess I can kind of understand where they're, you know, they're looking to uh, – they're, they're all playing on an even playing field. We know that, right? I mean, the owners, they're all looking at it from a standpoint of what's going to generate the most money. And uh, I think that when you, when you leave certain calls to the officials to be able to call it one way or another, whether there's conclusive evidence or not, I wouldn't be surprised if owners are also – hey, look, any questionable calls, lean on the side that's going to lead to more points because that's what people like. Me personally, I'm a boring football fan, Tim. I love low-scoring games, and this one was right down my alley until the Packers started to pull away, and I guess I'll, I'll learn to live with that, right, when yeah. we play the good win. But We talked about that uh, during the week. We, I, I think I mentioned that too. Yeah, this had all the makings of a 10-7 to type game or something, and uh, for a while there I thought it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, but – you know what? It was a beautiful day for football in Green Bay, Wisconsin, right? Not too cold. It was brisk. It was chipper. A little sloppy out there. A little little damp. A mm-hmm. little bit of moisture. You know, and that's the other thing, guys. You know, <laughs> that ball was popping out left and right on both sides of the ball today. So, you know, we don't want to get too hypercritical. Um, you know, especially you, you see Aaron Jones got that one punched out there and that's just going to happen. It does, especially in a sloppy, sloppy day like that. That also could, uh, you know, explain some of these throws too from from our quarterback. You know, right. th- they might have had a little extra wobble. Um, some might have been low. That's the other thing I wanted to talk about too. You know, when we see Jordan throw some of these balls low for his receivers, that's ball placement by design sometimes too. And we right. got to remember right. that. You know, we talk about hospital balls and things like that. So uh, when you when you see him drop one a little low to Malik Heath there and uh, he doesn't come up with it, you know, it's not about playing the blame game. It's about like Harley talked about understanding football and understanding sometimes you you want to throw a football about eight inches off the ground so your guy can catch it and no one else can and nobody goes on IR. So Mm -hmm. it's just part of the game sometimes. Uh, Yeah. But um, I'm I'm ecstatic right now because we saw improvement and we talked about this. It was getting getting a little dark there for Packer fans. And uh, so we saw some, some rays of hope today. All right. Well, to add to that, Tim, if you're looking at it like that, um, Malik Heese, I'm pretty sure was a deep in at first glance. It was, it was kind of the same pass he threw to Christian Watson a week prior. So if, if the first one was behind Watson and the second one's just in front of, and you know, lower on Wicks, I would say that that is, you know, a step in the right direction. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's all exciting. We got to look at the little things we got to win this week, win, win this week, which was what we needed, but, um, it's all in the little things. Absolutely. There's a lot of, a lot of conversation in here about Jordan Love and Christian Watson. You know, if, if I were to, uh, let's just go to jam here, jam, jam coming in here a little bit negative and that's okay. Everybody's welcome. As long as you're being respectful. Right. Um, but this is, uh, interesting. He said, love stats lie with all the exclamation points. Um, Horrible anything over 20 yards downfield. Late and underthrown every effing time. Uh, book it, Dano. Really, where's the improvement? Um, the improvement is the timing on his passes. Short and intermediate is is getting better now. That's what i seen today. Again, against a bad defense, I got you. Now, as far as the deep passes, you're spot on, man. That one to right. Christian Watson, everybody wants to judge Christian Watson and say he's, you know, he's fragile and this and that. I got you. I know this. He cooked this guy on that deep pass down the yep. left sideline. And – uh and that again, the ball should have been out immediately, and it wasn't. Yeah, that was on love, absolutely. So um, you make some good points, Jam, but at the same time, I don't think stats lie. I think uh, I think stats tell a more accurate story or a m- more accurate depiction of what's actually happening on the field than us emotional fans. And I say us because I'm as emotional as they get watching a ball game, I promise you that. <laughs> so there's some time. That's why I always want to go back and watch the tape, which I'm really excited to break down the Musgrave catch, the touchdown mm-hmm. catch. I don't know if you guys noticed it. But they come out in a double sidecar, and he did a double flat fake. He faked mm-hmm. the left flat to the right flat, opened the middle wide up, Musgrave down the seam. Great play design by Matt and a great execution by the guys on the play. And, again, when you're playing in the rain, 
Love's got those large hands. It's very, very important, you know, to be able to protect the football and, and to be able to spin it in the bad weather. I think it's safe to say he threw it better than than Rippin did today. Now, for what that's worth, right? But uh, Carly, what else you got for us before we let you go? I just want to say that I finally feel like I saw some momentum. I know some people don't believe that momentum is a thing, but I felt like both sides, the offense and the defense, really got something going, especially the defense. Just when people started making plays, they started making bigger plays. And with that, my little toddler has woken up from his nap, so I have to bug out. But <laughs> awesome job with the W, guys. It's a great thing to celebrate. Yeah. No, yeah. It's. Uh, I think they're – taking a step in the right direction. It's a young team that's looking to improve. And thank you so much, Carly, for, for hopping on. We appreciate you being patient with us. Um, yeah, I think they took a step in the right direction. Now, who do we got coming up next week, guys? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, my this is going to be a good test. This is going to yeah, be we'll a, good, a, we'll a good test now. And mm-hmm. so that, that's what's exciting about this season. And that's where you've got to find these little – caveats right these these little pluses mm-hmm. in a season where your team's playing down you're going to get a really 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 good um look at jordan love and what he does against pressure exotic looks going up against one of the best edge rushers in the game mm-hmm. right if you think you're going to be able to stand back here for seven seconds next week right i'm gonna i'm gonna say something that's probably not popular while Let's while we talk about this um because i keep thinking about um the comment about the deep ball with jordan love mm-hmm. and that is something that since camp we've talked about you know that there were question marks with deep ball accuracy yep. so there no nobody here has ever you know said that he was a stud at throwing the ball deep we we know this that's been Very on the, the scouting report so uh i'm gonna say something unpopular but it's something i believe especially after what we saw today we don't have to throw the ball deep down the field to win ball games mm-hmm. we don't we absolutely don't and as a matter of fact when we're in situations where we have to heave the ball down the field, we lose ball games. When we run the ball and we run this offense and we hit our swing passes, which we saw a little bit of happening finally today, Jordan throwing that swing or that uh, the quote unquote check down uh, in rhythm. And it turned into positive gains. Um, You know, that was a great point there. Uh, You know, balls over 20 yards down the field. Fine. Let them throw darts at 17, 18 yards and hit Musgrave over the middle. Let them throw to the flat and toe tappers on the sideline. And we'll keep moving the sticks until we get it in the end zone. That that that's honestly how I feel. I think the deep ball accuracy will improve with time and feel and touch, but I'd hate to have to lean on uh, on deep balls to get dubs. You know, so I'll I'll take running this offense and executing these uh, plays the way they did today at times. Um, Clayton, like you said, I, I love some of these play calls and I don't know if they were any more exotic than we've seen from Matt LaFleur this year. They were just executed better. Maybe they were called in, in better rhythm and better timing uh, down in situation or uh, down distance in situation. I think maybe that helped, but um, a lot of those plays, man, they were just executed better today. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take the dink and dunks, man. I really will move the sticks Move the ball down the field, put points on the board. That's how you get a win if you're this if you're the 2023 Packers. That's how we're gonna get wins. I, I firmly believe that. Absolutely. Before we wrap this thing up, why don't we go around the horn real quick and get everybody's player of the game? And I'll start with you, Emilio. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's the first one that comes to mind for you? Um, and, and that's the only way to answer this question, right? I know we yeah. immediately want to go, okay, what happened with what's the first thing that comes to mind? Because that's typically the right answer, right? Yeah, when you said it, Valentine. Right off the right off the rip when you said it, um, just hit the emotion like you were saying. If Kentucky lost their emotional leader, we just lost one. Some be, somebody needs to step up, like Goody says. Let's see if it's Valentine. And if him and Jack can get on the same page, he was linking up with Keyshawn, who I thought had a good game too. A couple of mistakes here and there. You know, we got to watch the tape, but um, it was really just a well, um, a well played game on the defense. I really think. AJJ, that's another good one, Omar. Man, you're Omar honest, stealing but, my pick, yeah. man. But uh, the uh, no, really, I think yeah, everybody is a heck of a game, and uh, um, and just having that, having that energy, having that. He almost had a pick. Imagine he had a pick on top of it. That's all we'd be talking about. But I'm pretty sure on that one, that was Preston Smith dropping in coverage. I don't want to say anything, but I just wanted to let people oh. know. And uh, besides that, um, 
You don't hear no. about it when it works. We needed it, man. It was a we were humming like a nice little four cylinder today. I like that. We were, we were doing all right on defense. I good. love that you refused to even go to the V six. You got yeah, it. we'll four. Yeah, we'll get there. We, we can we can upgrade, but we can put turbo on it first, and then we can maybe beef it up. But we'll go from there. <laughs> Definitely. So everybody's sounding off in the chat. Omar says Anthony Johnson. Uh, Steve is real. Says Anthony Johnson. Derek K says Valentine is Valentine is a beast. Uh, love Valentine today, Jam says. Um, Goose said, I'm going Jair. All right, I, I, I can't disagree with that for sure. Um, so uh, look at this. I think I think number one Packer fan, I'm going to go ahead and put words in his mouth. He said Joe oh. Barry was his player of the game. He said, okay, okay, Joe Barry wasn't bad. You happy? LOL. <laughs> I love it, man. Um, so with that being said, um, my fourth quarter notes, uh, Kobe Wooden on fourth down. Again, um, he showed up a couple times. Uh, I've got Jire with the tip and Anthony Johnson with the pick. Obviously, uh, Valentine and Brooks rose up right there at the end when the game was still within reach. Um, so, again, you see Wooden, you see Brooks, you see Valentine, all rookies, right? Anthony Johnson with the pick. Um, these young guys stepped up today, and that's what we wanted to see. It's what we. It's what I forced myself to get excited about today after Rasul was traded was, hey, look, we get to watch the young guys play, especially with Rudy Ford being out. And you guys know I love Rudy. I hope they extend him. The thought of Rudy and Anthony Johnson Jr. in there together. And then also watch watch Anthony Johnson Jr. come out tomorrow and have like a 40 PFF grade or something. But <laughs> also I like the idea of when you go big nickel, put Jonathan Owens in there. He shows he can tackle, obviously. But Tim, you said Anthony Johnson Jr. was your pick. I heard you say that. Is there anyone else or maybe just give us a, a reason why Anthony Johnson, maybe what he showed to you today? Um, I think a lot of what you alluded to, I don't know if the PFF grade is going to reflect this. I, I mean, the the numbers in the stat line, you know, he's not jumping off the paper. But what I saw was a, was a rookie thrown into the fire today that absolutely did his job and was not, you know, he wasn't busting coverages, man. He was alert, focused. Um, he looked like everything that I think I've seen in this guy. Uh, I've been excited to see him hit the field since August. I've been carrying the torch for him. And, uh, I, you know, that's what I was excited for today, man. You know, him and Valentine. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, status quo. I'm going to say Carrington and, and Anthony Johnson Jr. But I also felt like uh, looking at my notes that we we quietly got really good performances from TJ Slayton. And we got uh, a pretty good performance um, on the veteran side of the things from um, uh, Preston Smith today, who... Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, again, kind of like I was talking about with Anthony, Anthony Johnson Jr. here, the, um, the fact that you're everywhere on the field, man, you know, you're you're it seems like you're everywhere. If something's near your quarter or near your space, I'm not seeing you down on the ground or trying to recover. I'm seeing you anticipate and I'm seeing you communicating with your fellow teammates in the secondary. And uh, you hit it on the head, man. I'm excited to see uh, Johnson back there with Rudy Ford. Uh, I think J.O. had a great game today because these two played very, very well. You talk about, um, you know, Anthony Johnson being a top down guy and you got J.O. who's a who's a mauler and a tackler. And uh, we got to see that today in that secondary look good. So, yeah, yeah sure. um, we could go up and down on the defense, man. I felt good about the guys, but yeah, my, my player of the game is definitely Ant for sure. Yeah. And Johnson. Yeah. I'm loving seeing the chat here, people talking about Van Ness, too, because I noticed it as well. Mm -hmm. um, nothing flashy, but just playing within the scheme. And just every week, he's it seems like he's getting a little more experience, right? And we know the upside there is tremendous when it comes to Van Ness. So uh, I'm really, uh, really jacked to see how he – what kind of player he's molded – he gets molded into um, right. as we move forward for sure. And, again, yeah. I mean, said McDuffie, too. But Yeah, and to hop, hop on to that, Clayton, there was so much production from rookie contracts today – that there's so much for us to be excited about I, there. We still got three more years, you know, where they're at right now. And if we get that kind of production from Brooks, Wood and Valentine, AJJ, uh, everybody, Musgrave, Kraft, it's that's why we're the young team. This is what we were hoping for, you know, back when back when I was calling, you know, for 11 wins, that was you know, a little off the shooting from the hip there. But, uh, you know, I was wrong, but this is what we're looking for, for production and, you know, making steps in the right direction. This definitely helps. Uh, I'm glad, you know, this definitely helps Goody's uh, presser. Um, you know, we were just looking to beat the Rams and we did that. So I'm happy that that was true. And I'm happy that they didn't get, you know, washed up in all the emotions, which definitely, you know, took all of us you know, by surprise. But they came out and balled for them. And, and uh, you know, I appreciate that. I'm happy for the team. 
Definitely. I don't mean I'm not laughing at what you're saying over here. These dogs are wrestling against the desk and the camera's shaking. I'm just looking up. <laughs> looks like we're having an earthquake over here. They're uh, I mean, they're they're getting antsy. They're like, dude, you haven't thrown the ball one damn time today. Yeah. What is going on? You're so, talking your football around and I can't even get <laughs> right. Hey, just I'm make sure good. it's on time and in rhythm, Clayton. There we go. Hey. I like that transition, Tim. <laughs> hey, I this uh this year, early spring, I tore a rotator cuff. Um no more throwing the throwing the ball for me right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Getting old, man. I'm falling apart. I did You're teach have to get you a jugs machine. There you go. Yeah, hey, that'll work, right? Then I'd have to run a little bit too. Yeah. So I can't, come on now. I ain't interested in that right now. 41 years old. Let's go around the horn one more time. Tim, final thoughts, buddy. Um, I'll take it. It wasn't pretty, but we'll take it. <laughs> it what it wasn't pretty, but it was prettier than last week. Um yeah. Real quick, shout out to Goose there. He he stole the the words right out of my mouth. Devontae Wyatt um, absolutely took a step today for sure. Um, and uh, Keyshawn is my honorable mention also. We, I forgot to stress that. I think yeah. Keyshawn Nixon stepped up his, uh, his play in the slot today. Um, actually saw, maybe we can pick it out in Chalk Talk. There was a play it looked like uh, Ja wanted the slot and Keyshawn ended up on the boundary almost against his will. <laughs> and uh still still made a play um mm-hmm. there was also one where um Keyshawn beat his man uh on a blitz on a nickel blitz and then was beat by the runner and then recovered and made the made the shoestring tackle I mean so we were seeing guys balling their guts out and we need to see this every week are we going to see it nine more times this year I, I really hope so so final thoughts are steps in the right direction let's continue to take those steps in the right direction. Go, Pat, go. Definitely. Keyshawn ended up with five tackles. Also, Rashawn Gary had two quarterback hits. Of course, he had the the pen, the two penalties there early. That kind of, mm-hmm. you know, puts a puts a little damper on the, the game I felt like he had. Of course, you know, PFF are real hard on penalties, so he'll right. have probably one of his lowest graded games, although he did get uh, many pressures and, and quarterback hits as well. But, Milio, final thoughts, buddy. Great. Uh, you know, team performance as coming together in that sense. Um, <clears throat> the offense was on and off hot. We need to keep up on that third down conversion. I'm excited to go back and watch, you know, the offensive plays. Like I said, I think I Matt called a good game. I think Joe Barry called a good game. And I think people finally executed at least semi-decently today. We had some mishaps. We still had penalties. There's still execution issues. But we had, a, a, you know, those small victories, we're seeing that once one foot in front of the other and it's happening, it's just uh, we wanted it to happen a lot sooner. But at least we got something today and at least uh, the team's moving in the right direction, hopefully with a little bit of emotion behind it now that we that now that they know they can do it. We, hey, we thought we lost for Sula. This team's going to be terrible. You know, what do, what does this team have to, in their gut, you know? Yeah, they don't want to lose. I think I said it way back when we lost two games in a row. They're professionals, too. They keep getting punched in the mouth. They don't want that taste in their mouth. So this taste, you know, getting back to what they were saying, getting back to winning, getting back to feeling what that feels like. Let's get on the plane. Let's fly over to PA and let's handle business. That's what you got to do each week. You know, you're zero, zero, the clock zero, zero. And let's start again. Um, They got to start stacking days, man. Definitely. Badger Trio says, we get victory Monday for Monday for the first time in five weeks. Derek K says, feeling good one week at a time. Let's enjoy this one. Mike Berry with the W. And then Paul Robertson comes in here and says, CJ Stroud threw for 470 today. Do you think Love gets one 300-yard game this year? Let me tell you something, Paul. Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. But every time I see CJ Stroud throw a football, I go, God, I'd love to have him on the Packers <laughs> So I feel you, man. I feel you. Chris says no. We'll see, though. It's all a work in progress. Um, Eric Sutherland, I would like to thank Matthew Stafford's thumb for this victory, and we're going to end it with that. I completely agree. That's the zinger of the night. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us tonight. This was a this was a lot of fun, man. Get back in that dub column, right? I um, want to give a special thanks to all the Super Chats, Josh Martin, Togrel, Mike Hebring, Godsmack, AJJ, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for uh, hopping on here with us. Uh, I think that was everyone. Badger Trio, too. Thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate you supporting the stream. Also, want to thank everybody for the uh, the kind words and the feedback. 
from the new morning show, uh, Good Morning Lambo that we did earlier. We just did a pregame show, but that's going to be something we do a little more regularly, not every day. But when I've got time in the morning, you guys might wake up and, and see a 9 a.m. show Eastern time. Uh, just grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and uh, and we'll just kind of talk about what's ahead for the Packers that day, that type of thing. So, uh, again, thanks everyone that, that reached out and said they enjoyed that this morning. So we'll try to do more of that. Tim, Milio, thank you all so much for your time, man. This was a blast. Oh. Um, really exciting to get back in the W column. Like we said, the Packers come out on top 22-3. to Big defensive performance. We'll be back tomorrow with – the PFF grades and the goal will be to try to get chalk talk to you guys by Wednesday this week. We'll see if we can make that happen last week. It got a little bit hectic, but uh, again, Tim, you mentioned a play specifically, whatever plays you want covered, just try to give me a timestamp. All I need is just a first down third quarter, nine minutes, 20 seconds left, whatever it is. And we'll throw yeah. it on there for sure. So uh, yeah, appreciate everybody in the chat. This was a lot of fun. Thank you all for hanging out with us. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go back up. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Double tackle, take the defensive end if he's over, and if he's back, you drive down on the first man who's inside. Pull back and get him. Take the first man outside the offense. No one shows. Go right by this and feel this back. YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. The YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here, and a seal here, and try to run this play in the alley. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com. We make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com.